Flying through polar seas which steam in sub-zero temperatures, Bird's expedition continues its work in the frozen sun. Even the icebergs look different here, dark and discoloured by mud. Leaving the carrier, a jet-assisted plane makes for the polar shore where the base camp awaits the arrival of Admiral Bird himself. Leaving the plane, the 58-year-old explorer prepares for another stage of his fourth Antarctic adventure. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault Podcast. I'm your host, R.J. McCready. And for this episode, it's going to be more about a conspiracy. Uh, it's got mystery elements to it, but the the, the main bulk of this is, is, is a conspiracy. And let's do a synopsis. So today I'm going to be talking about something that you may or may not know. is an event called Operation High Jump, which happened after World War II with the US Navy. And the main synopsis is, is that the US Navy sent a task force to Antarctica to go and do some research. And... For me, let me just explain this, just you know, just give you a little bit of a taste of what the reason why I'm doing this episode today. When I think about the US Navy sending a research team to Antarctica, my first thought on that would be them sending a ship, maybe two ships, something like an icebreaker with a team of scientists, and then on board you have some supplies. Um, you may have a helicopter on that ship, you know, to do some surveys or plane. And when I actually looked <laughs> at Operation High Jump, it turns out that they sent 13 ships, one of them being a, a, a an aircraft carrier, um, 33 aircraft and 4,500 personnel. And I'm thinking, well, that's a lot for a research team. In fact, that doesn't even sound like a research team at all, does it? It, it sounds like an armada doing an invasion. So that's the first uh, thing that got my mind ticking, thinking, "Oh, yeah, maybe this is worth talking about." Let's let's find out what what they what were they expecting in Antarctica? You know, it's a vast wasteland. And then on top of that, this happened in 1946. So. Before that, as, as all of us are aware, you know, there's an event called World War II and the Americans would have used an awful lot of their, you know, US Navy, you know, reserve to fight this war. Um, and I know that they would have lost a lot in, in, in battles, such as the Battle of the Midway. They lost a couple of um, aircraft carriers, personnel, aeroplanes. Um, then they would have helped out in the campaign with um, Europe and also the Japanese battles um, in the in in the Pacific. So although World War Two is to is over, uh, 1946, you'd think that America is just as a nation, just talking about them as a nation, would have brought back all what was left of their uh, navy uh, back home, and I would have thought that. Even though Japan and you know Nazi Germany would have surrendered, um, your your country would still be vulnerable, um, you know, especially with a surprise attack from Japan. So, what gets me thinking with this is, surely you'd want to come back and try and get everything back to normal before sending a research ship to Antarctica, which is kind of makes. Which the the point I'm getting to here is, you know, you've you've just had a, a major uh, world world event, and then, you know, the U.S. Navy is now sending a research team to Antarctica, sending all these ships. Most of it's the U.S. Navy, which I'm pretty sure at the time you wouldn't be able to spare. And I've just noticed I've said research team, which this is the reason why I keep coming back and forth to this, with scratching my head. You know, it. it when you read about this, and it's all on 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 the internet, um, <laughs> I keep getting swayed to that word. But then when you look at it, you think, no, it's, it's not a research team. It can't be. It's it's an armada. It's an invasion. It's that's why I said at the beginning. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking if it's a research team, it's going to be a couple of ships. But it's not. It is full on U.S. <laughs> an an aircraft carrier. With 13 ships, submarines, um, 
four and a half thousand personnel and they must have been expecting something to send that so that's kind of what's got me excited today guys to uh, make me do this episode and uh, share this with you and um, I hope you find this interesting I hope you maybe some some of you may have just thought oh I didn't know about this so and that's the point um, of today's episode um, so Let's um, let's do some building block stuff here, and let's just talk about Antarctica. For anybody that, like myself, thought Antarctica was on the north and not the south, and I get my north, east, south, west, and all that all wrong. But um, for anybody that doesn't know where Antarctica is, it is uh, the southernmost um, place on 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 Earth, and it's where the South Pole is. And let's just give you a few um, facts and figures here. So. Um, it's 14.2 million square kilometres. Uh, it's uh, so it's basically twice the size of Australia. It holds 80% of the world's fresh water. Um, it's the most most inhabited, uninhabited place on on Earth. Um, there's about a population of a thousand people there in um, stations out there doing research. There you go. I'll quote that again. Uh, it if it melted. Um, if anybody's seen the film Waterworld, which I've covered on the other show, uh, the sea levels would rise uh, 200 feet, and the average temperature out there is minus 63 uh, degrees. And it was first discovered um, not really that long ago did we know about this place. It was back in 1820. And who owns this place? Well, Everybody does, really. There it is governed by 12 countries, and everybody in the world has signed a tre treaty basically saying we're not going to go and invade this place or have military um, exercises, nor are we going to um, launch any nuclear explosions out there. Um, which is something that we'll get into later on. Um, so, there you go, that is a rough. Um, there's, there's some facts and figures there of Antarctica. It's also, I didn't know this, uh, it's the most driest place in the world, would you believe it? It doesn't have any rainfall, and it's actually classed as a polar desert because of that. So that is that is Antarctica. It's a pretty cool place. And the other thing is, it's um, it, the thing with this conspiracy is, uh, this is something that I thought about, is you, it's not like you can just go down to the travel agent or... There's me saying going down the travel way or book it online these days. Um, and say, yeah, I want to go to Antarctica. You can't. Um, in fact, you, there are restrictions. If you wanted to go there, you'd have to go through the government. It's protected by the government. For some reason, they do not want people to go there, which ramps up the, the conspiracy theory again. Um, so, yeah, it's not like you can go out there and go, well, let's find out what the US Navy was doing out there. Um, you can't. But there you go, there's some facts and figures of Antarctica, and I imagine it would probably be a really cool place to go and have a look at. So, so fast and so tranquil, and very beautiful as well at the same time, but there you go. Um, let's get back to the conspiracy theory. So, it's 1946, uh, World War II has ended, and Admiral Chester Nimitz, the fleet commander of the US Navy, has... Um, put this expedition together to go out to Antarctica almost like on the hurry up let's go out there let's, let's, let's go and do some, some research in Antarctica and the man in charge of this is a guy called Admiral Richard E. Bird um, and he's he's a hell of a guy himself he was a Medal of Honor recipient um, he, he was an explorer he's, he actually explored himself before World War II the North and South Poles he was a pilot um, he was the first pilot to actually fly over the South Pole, uh, which is where he received the Medal of Honor because it's such a dangerous task. Um, he also served in World War One and World War Two, so he had uh, 20 years of uh, naval experience. So this guy um, knew what he was doing, and he was in charge of the fleet. And as I've already mentioned, um, he has been given pretty much every available uh, US Navy ship available, and it's called Task 68. 
And I won't name all the uh, ships involved, but one of the aircraft carriers called the uh, USS uh, Philippine Scene C. It's a beautiful looking ship and it's all fully equipped with um, 100 planes and armour. And as you could imagine, it's it, it's fighting fit, it's ready for battle. These are the ones that they, well, wasn't involved in the Midway, but it would have been involved in that type of campaign. Um, so this was assisting. And the main objectives was uh, is a training exercise on the whole, and um, they say that America is trying to extend its sovereignty going to Ant Antarctica, but um, the nation or the navy actually denied this. Um, but the other objectives were that they were trying to find base sites, um, air bases, um, so they could fly planes on the or land planes on the ice and also amplify their knowledge of electromagnetic meteorological geographic um, conditions. So yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the main, main objectives, you know, sending out this fleet, that is it, you know, and that, that's what gets me thinking, I'm thinking, right, okay. Um, as I said, don't get me wrong, it does make sense to go and do research and check these places out, just not with this, this false, that's just, you know, what I think on the top of my head but um, this one does make sense this objective was that um, what they're saying is what they're worried about is that um, an invasion fleet could cross over the Antarctic to try and get to the United States and um, because of the, the surprise attack of Pearl Harbor from Japan though the, the I think this was from um, Admiral Nimitz he was saying look you know the world's getting smaller um, we can't allow these surprise attacks again so we've got to cover all angles so we've got to make sure that no one can come in through the back door now that does make sense so that one I get but this is where it now takes you down the rabbit hole because not only was it the US Navy that went to Antarctica and here we go this is where the, this is where the white rabbit turns up and takes you down the rabbit hole the Nazis were involved as well so here we go. This is this is where it gets interesting. This is the reason why I'm doing this episode today. So I'm thinking, ah, right, oh, okay. Um, so Hitler, as I've mentioned before in the last episode, Rages of the Lost Ark and the Occult, he was looking for ancient artifacts around the world. That was a fact. It was Heinrich Himmler that was involved with that. He believed that there was ancient civilizations, ancient energies, ancient artifacts and the Nazi regime was for world domination. So if they could find it, they would. That's again general consensus with them. And they did spend time in Antarctica before World War II. Actually in 1938-1939, Hitler sent out a task force to Antarctica. And this is where this becomes interesting. They spent a couple of years out there doing something looking for something and when you when you add that piece to the pie of Hitler trying to find ancient civilizations you start to think okay so what's out in Antarctica is there something out there so you've got the Nazis out there before the war and then immediately after the war you now got the US Navy rushing to Antarctica with this um, invasion force and you're thinking right okay something's happening um, but the like I say the, the Nazi um, expedition to Antarctica is very well doc documented. Uh, they didn't send as many ships out there, but they were out there for some time. And they have basically said that they were looking for um, resources, mainly oil, to help with the war, the war effort. So it is planning to declare war on the world for this domination. So that kind of does. Um, make sense um, on, on, on the face of it but this is all leading to something for me um, because what this does tell me is that they did spend a couple of years there in Antarctica and I said this is all well documented and this puts them in that in that place so it's almost like I'm playing a game of chess here I'm putting these pieces where they're supposed to be just as a sort of building block before I start going into all those conspiracy theorists, okay? Um, and then the other thing to mention here, and this would be a good point to mention as well, is the closest, the other continent which is closest to Antarctica is Argentina. 
where you've got Cape Horn, um, which mirrors the peninsula of, of Antarctica. And this is another theory. It's like, there's always loads of conspiracy theorists with, with the Nazis and what happened then after World War II. There's a lot of people think that the, um, a lot of the um, leaders of the Nazi regime fled to Argentina. And there's a lot of people that say that's where Hitler went. And there's a lot of um, his hierarchy that had been seen in that region. And the other thing is, um, after World War II, 54 submarines had gone missing from the fleet as well. No one, no one knows exactly where they they went to. And there is a documented event here which kind of ties this up. Is in 1946, a Icelandic whaling ship was spending spending some time off um, the Falkland Islands. Uh, just off the coast of Argentina and the ship was called the Juliana and the captain stated that he came across a U-boat, a Nazi U-boat which surfaced um, and they were in fear of their life, the crew of the whaling ship and they and the captain said that um, they got boarded, uh, the Nazis came on board um, and they basically paid, instead of threatening them, basically paid them money in American dollars um, to purchase supplies, um, bits of of whale meat and any any sorts any supplies that they had on the ship, and they paid them money, um, and they told the, the whaling ship that you'll find a pod of whales far north from this region. It's almost like uh, the captain was trying to sort of steer this whaling ship away fr from this lo location. He's trying to get him out of there. Um, then it submerged and it went away. So this this got documented. So it put a Nazi submarine in this area in 1946. So like I say, the building block here is that the Nazi spent time in Antarctica. There's a documented event of a Nazi submarine turning up off Argentina. Uh, by the Falkland Islands and then plus you have the conspiracies of the Nazis fleeing down to South America so um, they wanted to get down into this location that people were, you know, have this sort of theory that this is where they fled to so they wanted to get down as far south as they wanted to which kind of ties all this up and the other um, thing which is worth mentioning here is after World War II you had a operation called Operation Paperclip where um, all of the like German Nazi scientists um, were basically taken in by the Americans for the um, space race um, they, they, this is again this is this is a legit account of 1600 scientists going to America and helping the Americans out with their research um, and then from Pro Operation Paperclip, it then branches out into another theory. And I promise, guys, I'm I'm really getting to a point here, right? Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm beating around the bush here before I do the sort of big display. Um, but with the Nazi scientists, they were very advanced, you know, with the, the V1 rockets. Um, a lot of their te technology on the, you know, German Nazi side. Um, you know, when you talk about it, you think... How did these guys not win the war, you know, with the, with their technology? So very close to creating the atom bomb. Um, now, a lot of people say that there is this secret Nazi war program where they were making um, advanced technology. Um, and one of those is the flying saucer. If you look on, on online, uh, there is that. Uh, famous looking fine saucer which uh, has got the uh, dome shapes at the bottom of it and it's got the I think it's got like a Nazi swastika on there and there was also the the German bell which has got something to do with time travel or something like that which really goes into some deep realms but there is this theory that the scientists were up to something so tying all this in together you've got Antarctica you've got U-boats that went missing 54 in total and there is this conspiracy that the, the Nazis, after the war, spent some time in Argentina. And then you've got the US Navy that's gone down to Antarctica. So the building block here is something was going on down there. And what conspiracy theorists think, now this is the big rule, they think that there was some secret Nazi base down in Antarctica where they were doing all the research for this uh, Nazi technology. And it's believed that 
um, before World War Two in 1938-1939, that Hitler had found something down there. He not only found a, he not only built a secret Nazi base, but came across some ancient civilization from the past, which had some very advanced ancient technology, which um, helped him with with the war effort. So that is that is the theory here, and it does sort of tie up. If if that was the the case, um, this is where it ties up with Operation Paperclip. Just in my mind, do you think if you've if you've got the scientists from Germany, which are now helping you with the space race, there's a good chance that one or two of them have just come out and spoken to the American scientists, and they've had this conversation and said, "Well, the Americans have probably gone." So, where have you got all this technology from? And there was a conversation between the Americans and the Germans, where the Germans came out and said, we were helped out. Now, I don't know any more than that, but there was this conversation that happened, supposedly, that the Germans actually came out and said, yeah, we didn't make this technology up ourselves, we were helped out from somebody. And what is that somebody, you know? And, you know, the conspiracy theorists reckon that there was a... You know, advanced race. Could there be been extraterrestrials? You've got the flying saucers now. And... Boy, I know, like, you know, you know, listening to this, it does sound far-fetched. And I get that, but... You know, that's why I've done this. It's important for me to build this building block at the start. To say, yeah, you know, the Navy's gone out there and the Nazis were in Antarctica. And, you know, let's put it out there, you know, it, it it could be that this is all ramped right up, you know, it, it could just be that all the Nazis were doing was just, got, they've gone to Antarctica and just gone out to find some resource, and this <laughs> naval US arm has just gone out there to do some research, you know what I mean, you know what, that could just be it, but there is, there is this part that sort of <laughs> makes you think... Yeah, but the other stuff sounds plausible as well when you think about it because, you know, there was advanced Nazi technology and um, it wouldn't surprise me if the Nazis made some, some secret base. So, um, you know, by the end of the war, um, it would make sense that if these Nazi scientists, which, which was true, they did help out, one or two of them did come out and say, yeah, we, we've got this Nazi base in Antarctica and it's got all this advanced technology and if you do go down there don't go down there sort of unequipped if you want to go and investigate it I would go down there prepared because you might get some retaliation and that's what I think's happened here you know it, it's it's a good chance that um, Admiral Nimitz has found out about this and America's gone yep Hitler has surrendered um, the Allies have won, won World War II, but this campaign isn't finished yet, but we can't tell the world. We, we're going to have to um, try and make something up here, so let's just say that we're sending a research team down. The said research team then goes to Antarctica. They're probably doing a little bit of research, you know, to sort of put onto to cameras and, and record it. But on the sideline, it is, right, let's, let's go and find out what's going on down here. Let's find this place. And... Going back to the US Navy, they did um, do a survey of Antarctica with the um, uh, seaplanes that they had, the PBMs, I think they called them, um, where they took 70,000 photographs, aerial photographs of Antarctica to, to do a survey. So it was almost like they were looking for something. And the Nazis also did this back in 1938. They took 11,000 photos uh, mapping out Antarctica. Um, so it's almost like again it, it feels like a race to go and go and find something um i've also forgot to mention that there were the russians involved with this as well only a small amount um but they did a they documented the event and uh this is where a lot of this information has come out recently with the release of um documents and there is now this is where all the conspiracy theory information has come out and I'm going to sort of really cut to the chase here. There's there's talks of Admiral Byrd coming across a, a oasis in Antarctica, which is called, uh, the, the Germans called it New Schwabland. 
uh, it said that they found a, a tropical land in Antarctica where there was like a, a hot air stream and also came across the said flying flying saucers um, craft which they had never seen before um, craft that was flying at 50,000 miles per hour um, something that could fly from the the north and the south pole and it is also said that the US Navy did intercept um, in a battle with this craft uh, something which is way above the technology that they had they they had losses they had a battle and um, it said that in 1947 the US Navy retreated from from Antarctica now whether this is whether they had their butt but kicked. Um, I don't know. There's, there's. This is just a overview of this. Is there's little bits of information that have come out. Um, but what I would say is, you know, there is a, you know, there's a little bit of plausibility here. Um, it is, it, is, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's real, it's real sort of fantasy, isn't it? But um, as I said, you know, you you can see it as a straight. Nah, this is, this is ridiculous, you know. You know, U.S. Navy flying flying saucers in Antarctica in a secret Nazi base. This is right out of a movie. But um, you know, the reason why I've done this building block at the moment is when you there are some facts on the table to kind of make this uh, plausible. And whether it was, you know, people talk about extraterrestrials. I know that's out there, but it could just be that the Nazis did have a secret base and they did have some advanced technology and. They could have had something that we still don't know about today that the, the government might be keeping secrets from us of technology which is very advanced that the, Na the US Navy thought, man, we've got to try and keep a lid on this the best we can. Um, so who knows, you know, it's you know, it's up to the general public to, to decide. Um, but uh, what what is a, is a fact, though, is up in the uh, North Pole regions, in 2016 there was actually a secret Nazi base that was found um, in the Arctic it's a place called Alexandria land and it was old bunkers found by Russian scientists so you know there were th that is a fact I think you can find that on the internet um, the uh, it does sort of tie up that there were Nazi bunkers created in these in these polar regions and there was this supposed battle between the US Navy where there was supposed to be some fatalities, but the only fatalities recorded was a, um, a PBM, um, a flying plane that uh, crashed and four of the air crew got killed. Now, those, those were the only fatalities um, in this uh, two-year uh, research campaign because in 1947, the, the US Navy came home. They, they withdrew. Um, and... I suppose the other thing now, just to sort of come to the a conclusion here, uh, the other thing I noticed here was uh, a little bit later on in 1958, there was an operation called Operation Argos, where there were three nuclear bombs that were dropped in this region. Um, and then again, you know, it's, you, you, you take this with a pinch of salt. Would, were, were they just testing these nuclear bombs out? Or were they destroying something, something that they thought, you know... Um, there's technology down there that we can't handle. The Nazis have had hold of it, and the only way we're going to get rid of it is to nuke it. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, it's conspiracy stuff I'm talking about today. I'm just looking at it, and I'm just thinking, you know, did they go back there in 1958 and thought that's it? We we've got to nuke it. So let's pretend that we're doing an experiment, but we're really blowing this place up. So um, that it, it kind of fits a timeline um, from 1938 with the Nazis being out in Antarctica to the war to Operation Paperclip to then Operation High Jump perhaps maybe the, the US Navy you know had their butts kicked by some Nazi technology and then they've gone back in 1958 to go and blow it up with a nuclear bomb it's out there but <laughs> there you go um, so yeah that, that's it guys that's, that's kind of like an overview um, so if you've never heard of Operation Paper, um, Paperclip, Operation High Jump before, that is uh, just just me hitting no puns here, just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Darren Randall, if you're listening, I know you, you, you'd like that one. Um, but um, I'm going to do something fun now. Um, because when I looked at this, it did make me think of other things, some some fictional stuff in books, um, which I think we've always been fascinated in. Um, when it comes, to, if there's any of you look that the like fantasy and movies, I certainly do. Um, as some of you may know that I, I love movies and stuff like that. But I'm going to put this into the mix as well. Um, so when you think about, uh, you know lost civilizations and the fantasy element is 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 some famous books and movies out there so you actually had um a film called sinbad and the eye of the tiger uh, now this does actually relate to greek mythology where uh, the greeks actually f um spoke about a mythical place called hyperborea and in the movie they have to take the prince because he's been turned into a um, a chimpanzee and the hyper, the ancient Hyperboreans um, in the northern part of the well, obviously the North Pole they have this ancient technology which will reverse him back to human so you know it's out there but it, it's, it's in the movie world you've also got um, another classic which really does tie up with this is The Land That Time Forgot and this is Edgar Rice Burroughs writing in 1918 of a land called um, Caprona, which is a lost continent which has a tropical climate and supposedly has dinosaurs. This is all fiction, but I just thought I'd throw this into the mix. Um, also, Journey to the Centre of the Earth. This is worth mentioning. Uh, the famous Jules, Jules Verne novel. Now, Jules Verne was very famous for using science with fantasy and again it's the um hollow earth theory not the flat earth theory which is total bonkers my eyes but there's the hollow earth theory here with um jules fern thinking that there's underground caverns and uh, i just thought i'd mention this because it, it is that what the nazis were also looking for you know so, to, to help build their underground base um, also, I think, I'm trying to think of this one, there was The Island at the Top of the World, that was another movie, I don't know if that was a Jules Verne um, novel, where they find an ancient uh, Viking race in, I think it was in Iceland, in the Arctic region, and lots of, I couldn't, I couldn't really leave this one out, The Thing from 1982, the uh, famous US outpost uh, 31 where they come across a crashed UFO in the or flying saucer in the ice which causes them all sorts of problems but there you go I thought I'd throw that one in there that's just, that's just a bit of fun for the end of the episode but um, it does draw you into those realms of uh, also Atlantis as well with Plato um, and the Egyptians and the Mesopotamians um, this is kind of leading on to the lost civilization and you know the the occult stuff with the Nazis. Nazis, um, they believed that there was ancient civilizations, and so did the the Greeks and Plato. So um, all this stuff, you know, it's all part of the building block. Where you, as I said before, you go away and you think, you know, it could the Nazis could have just gone out there for research and so could have the you know U.S. Navy, but. When you put everything else in the mix, you kind of think, well, is there an ancient civilization? Was there ETs? Was there UFOs? Did they have a fight? Who knows? You know, we can only speculate. And um, as as much as it sounds bonkers, it's also a hell of a lot of fun to have these discussions. So that's why I thought I'd put this one on on the table today. So. Um, all I'd say is go away and make your own mind up and uh, go and have a look at it on the internet because there's a lot more information on there but I'd, I could have gone could have gone on for hours but I like to keep the show to 30 minutes so there you go that is 30 minutes of Operation High Jump and uh, hope you enjoyed that today guys so <laughs> I say it certainly took me down a rabbit hole and, as, and, I'll, and I'll tell you now was, when I when I looked at this I was thinking well, how do I tell this story so Hopefully you've enjoyed that. I've done, <laughs> I've done the best I can with that. So uh, there you go. I'll, I'll leave it on that. But um, that's it. Um, that's the end of the episode, guys. Uh, 
A little bit of admin for the show. I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so please go and check out all the other shows on there, including my other show called Bite Size Cinema Podcast. Uh, you can find the show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and several other players on the internet if you type in the Mystery Vault Podcast. I've also got a face- Facebook page where I'm most active, and that's the best place to um, contact me. Um, let me know if there's anything that uh, you want me to cover. And um, yeah, that's it. I've um, always make this sharp as, an, as I go along. Um, there'll be a new episode coming out soon. I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but I will think of something weird, wonderful, and strange. So, as always, keep it spooky, keep it safe, and I'll see you soon. I think this is a ghost story. I think this is a ghost story. here in this room is a well. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.